Over the last couple of years, amongst all the news, one headline stood out to me more than others. It read, giraffes silently slip onto endangered species list, and I realized that so much attention was being given to the disappearance of other African giants, such as elephants and rhinos, I wasn't even aware that giraffes have been facing similar problems. My name is Agatha Jackson. I'm a documentary filmmaker committed to voicing stories I believe other people should hear about. I traveled to South Africa to film these record-breaking animals, world's tallest mammals, and meet with the ranger Kurt von Maltitz from Scotia Private Game Reserve to find out more about the situation facing giraffes. I came here to actually find out what's what's the situation with giraffes being endangered. So the South African uh, species, uh, we don't need to worry about it. It is not an endangered species. There are still lots of them around. Though, uh, if you look at the other species, for example, in further north into, into Africa, uh, I'll put an example, the, the Kori crop, that is one of the ones that we do need to worry about, as it is an endangered species. Filming wildlife is not easy most of the time and you never know whether you'll have any luck with getting the footage you want. But on this occasion, giraffes were kind enough to allow me to capture some great shots. I just can't imagine the world without this beautiful, beautiful animal. And I just don't understand why people don't pay that much attention to them. Everyone's so focused on all the other big mammals here in Africa, you know, lions that hunt, rhinos or elephants that are being poached for their tusks and for their horns, but no one really cares enough about the giraffes, but they're just so unique. They're the world's tallest mammal. Get the shot? I got some. Okay. Yeah, take a look. Okay. No, that's brilliant. Very well done. I was quite lucky. Yeah, they were lucky. quite exposed. Yeah. No, they came in quite nicely. I think my mission right now is to capture enough of beautiful images to actually make people think that they are beautiful yes. as no. a species. No, they definitely are beautiful as a species. And I think it's very important to create the and give people the idea of what what animal the giraffe is. Each day we drove with Kurt around the reserve looking for giraffes, hoping they won't be hidden in a thick bush so that I could get my collection of shots. But we weren't always that lucky. Right, we found the giraffes, but they're in a really, really bush area and I, I can't get them with the camera, so I'm going to try with the drone. I'm, I'm going to have to hurry up. Right, some of them are standing, but the rest are moving, so... Just going to go up. And go.
I've got them there in a really nice group. So I might be able to do some circling around them. I think I've just flew into the bush. So now we need to retrieve my drone. Yeah, near the blue. Near the blue and the red. So we've got a map and now uh, we're just trying to find it according to the map that I've got on, uh, on my playback on my phone connected to the remote. I'm just a bit stressed out that we're not going to be able to find it. Oh my god! It's not even in the bush! Oh, poor guy! I'm sorry! Maybe it was in the bush and it just fell down. Maybe it was there. The top, nick the top maybe and yeah. it tumbled. Yeah, no, it just looks a little bit roughed up, but uh, I hope it's working. We'll see in a second. All right, let's see whether it works. And it works. Quite oblivious at the time, only the next day did I discover that the gimbal responsible for stabilizing the image in my drone has been dislocated. But with a bit of determination, I fixed it with a teaspoon. Nearly losing my equipment, however, wasn't the only challenge I faced. So we, we found a giraffe when it's just hiding, but, um, but the weather is not great. It's raining, so we're probably not going to manage to get any shots. Um, Kurt, what do, how does the weather like this affect giraffes? Okay, they don't particularly like this kind of weather. It's cold weather, so they'll go find very thick bush or go into valleys, or they'll hide away and hopefully keep warm. Apart from capturing the footage of the giraffe, I had also other goals. I wanted to get more insight into what are the reasons for plummeting numbers of giraffes in Africa and what can be done to aid this situation. Hence, I consulted Kurt about his knowledge and opinion on that matter. There are certain species of giraffe uh, that are considered vulnerable. One of the factors is poaching because they are being killed. So there are lots of people that are still hunting them because um, they will want to get meat uh, for the community. Secondly, the more destruction that's done to the habitat, the smaller the habitat becomes. For example, uh, in Countries where there's a very large population of elephants, uh, elephants will eat the tree, they'll destroy the trees, and so they'll destroy the habitat that the giraffe is actually living in, so the numbers will plummet. What, in your opinion, can be done to solve the problems with the endangered species of giraffe? First key will be to educate the local people, and second, also anti-poaching. And uh, so if you can control and manage the reserve, then uh, you'll be able to keep those kinds of people out from poaching the giraffe, and then also to teach people how to manage the reserve. Okay, if you manage the reserve correctly, uh, you can still uh, let the reserve grow and actually let the uh, vegetation recover. And so if the vegetation recovers, uh, your concentration and your population uh, can also increase. Right, so is that why the South African species is performing better than the other? I would definitely say so. Uh, because there is a lot of game management that goes on in South Africa. 
Okay, there are lots of game reserves that are established and also busy establishing. And there is, so there's a lot of education for the management in South Africa. My trip to South Africa came to an end and it was time to return back to Bristol. I didn't feel satisfied with my understanding of the giraffe conservation problem, so I decided to dig a little deeper, this time locally. I stumbled upon the lecture by Bristol Zoological Society's conservationist, Osiris Dumbe. He talked about his work with the Cordofant Giraffe in Northern Cameroon and a fantastic conservation initiative, Wild Place Project, a part of Bristol Zoo, which features animals not found in the main Clifton Garden. I contacted Osiris hoping he would help me clarify the issues with giraffe conservation and he kindly agreed to meet me in the Wild Place Project itself. So Osiris, you are um, a conservationist yourself and you work with giraffes. Can mm -hmm. you explain what really is the situation with, with giraffes? Yeah, sure. So unfortunately, the situation of giraffes in the wild isn't great at the moment. Uh, their population has been uh, dramatically decreasing since the 90s and is been decreasing relatively silently. So uh, Dr. Julian Fennessy from Giraffe Conservation Foundation, for example, uses this expression of a silent extinction simply because it's only recently that in the media we've heard that giraffes are threatened, but they've been so for some decades now. Why are giraffes endangered? Well, giraffes are endangered mainly because of habitat destruction. So uh, population in Africa is growing and you have less and less space for wildlife, including giraffes. So um, that's the main reason. Second reason is poaching. So poaching for hide, poaching for meat, but also poaching for uh, the tail. Some tribes in Africa actually kill the giraffes just for their tail. So why, why has it gone so silently? Why has it been spoken about? Well, I. I think honestly that the reason is because there is no market for giraffe body parts in uh, Western countries. So it's not like the horns of the, the rhino or the tusks of the elephant. There is actually no market uh, in, uh, for giraffes. And that's why it's been so silently because the main issues are endemic to Africa, which is and the main one is habitat destruction. Being here, I was lucky to see some of your reticulated giraffes. Yeah. And from my research, I gathered that there are different subspecies. So when yes. I went to South Africa, I've seen the South African giraffe. Giraffe. Mm -hmm. um, now the reticulated one, which is which looks very different. Yes. And I understand that there are they, they all have different conservation status. Yes, indeed. For example, the conservation status of reticulated giraffe is endangered. They're only found in three countries in Eastern Africa. Uh, the South African giraffe is doing much better, but you have nine different subspecies of giraffes. Officially, you have one species, but uh, some taxonomists uh, want to think there are uh, four species of giraffes. Uh, I'm not a taxonomist, I will just follow uh, what the International Union of Conservation for Nature says, which is one species of giraffes and nine uh, subspecies, yeah. And uh, actually, the reticulated giraffe is not the giraffe that you work with. You, mm -hmm. as far as I remember from your lecture, you work with cordophant giraffes, which yes. is one of the critically endangered yes, uh, giraffes. So um, how about we walk over there to a, another section of the Wild Place Project, which is actually a reconstruction of, of, your, of the place that you work in at Cameroon, yep, yep. and I'll find out more about your work. Yeah, definitely. OK, let's, let's go. go. All right, so this is Sakje Market. Amazing. Yeah, it really looks like we're in Cameroon. Yes, it's, a, it's something that I've never seen in, in any zoo before. It's this reconstruction of the place. It's very mm. immersive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, yeah. So it is like the place that you're based in the Cameroon. Yes, sort of. So a lot of these uh, materials are actually coming from Cameroon. Yeah. Great. And can you can you tell me a bit more about your work there with Bristol Zoological Society? Yes. So first of all, what we do is the research. So we try to estimate the population of giraffes in Benue National Park and uh, the surrounding areas in uh, the north of Cameroon, which is not that easy because uh, the savanna is heavily forested. So you have a lot of trees. That's why we're using drones. Drones, are, we use them to have a better cover of the, um, of the savanna. We 
also using camera traps because each uh, giraffe has its own spot patterns. We are also working with the rangers and the conservator of Benue National Park. We're supporting their patrols. And finally, we are also working with the local communities, the farmers and the cattle herders to try to reduce the pressure, especially of the cattle herders during the dry season in Benue National Park. Because the issue is that you don't have that much grass available outside national parks during the dry season. So the cattle herders tend to enter the national park, even though it is not legal, to cut down the branches of uh, some trees, especially Avzelia Africana, which is one of the favorite trees of the giraffe. So you can see that there is directly a conflict between uh, people and giraffes there. What I love about this place, the Wild Place Project, is that it's not just a reconstruction of the place that you work in, but it also directly supports the work you do, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, if I think I'm not directly involved in any kind of work in Africa, but if I wanted to help your work, I can come to this place and I know that I can support it. Yeah. How does that work? So, yeah, like you said, it really immerses the guests when they come in, so they feel like it, they are in Cameroon, um, because uh, that's really what we try to do, like to show the public what we do uh, in the wild, the conservation project, we do have in the wild and for each ticket paid by the guests actually some money goes to our conservation pot and uh, these conservation pots uh, is uh, distributes the money to the different projects of Bristol Zoological Society including the one of the giraffes so in coming here the guests are actually contributing to uh, the work we do in the wild for the protection of giraffes amazing not just contributing but learning about it and mm -hmm. having massive fun i mean the, the enclosures here are really really beautiful and yeah. i love the fact that animals are mixed together mm -hmm. you're not just seeing one animal in each yeah. enclosure they're all roaming naturally <laughs> together like they would yes, in africa exactly isn't this amazing but in terms of a grand scale mm -hmm. What really needs to be done to apes to solve the problem with giraffes? I went recently to South Africa and I've learned there from one of the rangers that their approach is to establish reserves mm -hmm. and manage the animals that are there. What do you think about this? So I think uh, private reserves and fenced areas have played a very big role in the conservation of wildlife in South Africa. That's thanks to this, for example, that the white rhino recovered uh, greatly. Um, I. I do not think it's the way forward though, because I like to see wildlife, I like to think of wildlife as wild animals, so in wild areas without fences. Obviously because of the growing population now it's very difficult, um, but for that I think the key is to work not only with the local communities but also with the government, as long as there is a strong will of the government, we're already uh, leading towards the right direction. Ecotourism could play uh, a very big role in this. I'm not saying that it is the solution because you also have a lot of negative impact with uh, tourists coming in one area, but it could be uh, one of the solutions. So we need to work very closely with the government, the local people, and this is the key to me. So you have possibility, for example, to do sustainable hunting with the locals, which is what they do already in Benue National Park, for example. So uh, they, the locals are allowed to fish in the river from time to time. Uh, so having the locals involved in the protection of the environment is the key. That's what kind of what we have with um, uh, the Niger giraffes. The Niger giraffes is only found in Niger. It used to roam from Senegal to Nigeria, and now the only country with giraffes in West Africa is Niger. So the government took this as a, as, as a pride to protect the, the, the giraffes and they've gone from 50 individuals in the 90s to more than 400 now. And none of these 400 individuals is actually found in the, in the national park. They're all roaming free. Towards the end of our visit at the wild place, we even managed to make it to a short talk about different giraffe facts given by Ellie Adams in the giraffe enclosure. It was then seeing them up close that for the first time I noticed how they ruminate, that it swallow and unswallow the food they chew. Through this adventure, my fascination for giraffes has grown even more. If you are also a fan of these incredible animals and would like to help them thrive in the wild, well, there are plenty of things that you can do, such as visiting the Wild Place Project in Bristol or other similar local initiatives that directly help with the conservation work in Africa. You can travel to African reserves to witness the beauty of these animals yourself, at the same time contributing to conservation profits coming from ecotourism. You can also support the work of the Giraffe Conservation Foundation by donating, adopting a giraffe or purchasing some of their charity apparel. Thank you.